and the recording has begun. I hope you are ready. So today we're doing like a sort of session zero here. Um, Saifael is actually new to D&D, and we're going to be going over all the mechanics and stuff. It's going to be a low and slow game. Uh, again, this this uh, the ghouls and gauges rules apply, where you're going to have this story you want to work through, but there are deeper layers to the story, and the better you do, the more mysteries you solve, and the closer to the heart of the matter you get, the more rewards you're going to have. So... For now, uh, let's begin with introducing our characters. Bree, Bree, could you start with yours? Sure. Hi, my name is Poppy. No, not Poppy. Sorry. Hold on. Hi, my name is Robin, and I am about. I, I weigh about like, oh, what was it? 0.8 grams. I can't remember. Eight ounces. Very small. I'm eight ounces. I'm very small. And I'm very excited, and I'm very clumsy, and I'm very strong, and um, yeah, I just I like I'm very happy, and I I have to save everyone who's in trouble because I'm awesome. Thanks. What do you look like there? Oh, right. Whatever. I am um well, I'm very little, and I have wings, and I have blue hair. And I also have some really cool clothes that are red. Like a robin. But robins don't normally have blue hair, but whatever. I think we'll let you take some creative licenses with the, uh, the birds of the world, since you're a fae. Duh. Okay. <laughs> uh, Tanif, go ahead and introduce us to your character. My name is Ranagar. I am a Dro half elf. I am a level one warlock who is a far traveler from distant lands, seeking out new knowledge and new intrigue. Okay. So with those two two examples, Saifael, why don't you introduce us to your character? Hi, I'm Marlo. I am a human medic. Uh, trained in pretty wow, um, pretty basic medical arts, but also trained at a college. I am a you know normal sort of uninteresting brown-haired human. Okay. Well, hi! This is going to be so much fun. All right. Well, since, uh, since you guys have done that, I will just go right into setting the scene here, okay? Nice to meet you all. We're going to have a fun adventure today. Keep your arms and legs inside the narrative at all times, unless you can think of a really creative way to break it. Okay. Awesome. So this one's called Cleansing Purity. Our story takes place amongst a small community of druids, priests, support staff, and their families. This settlement just, uh, sits just outside of a cursed marsh of gnarled trees in fetid pools. This was once a grove, a druidic sanctuary, a forest of lush growth, and the perfect testament to the harmony of life. Then, when the armies of the legendary orc warlord Grash met with the Imperial Legion of Decian III, the peaceful sanctuary became a charnel house. From then on, the land was changed. The cycle of life and death was twisted and warped. The spirits of the dead were restless. The trees hungered to taste flesh. The soil itself became a festering bog, waters black with pollution. What's more, the tainted grove, now known as the Blightwood, is growing. In a joint effort between the clergy and the druidic circles, the town of Purity stands sentry against the blight spread. You guys have all been hired to come to this town by the priest. And you've been hired to come in and investigate exactly uh, what kind of monsters they're dealing with out here. However, you've been sidetracked in some way because you awake lying on your backs, cold earth below you, loose soil above. 
Your hearts beat once, twice, three times, and blood begins to flow in your veins once more. Thoughts, muddy and slow, begin to quicken. Where are you? Why is it so dark? Is that dirt in your mouth? You all sit bolt upright, your heads and shoulders breaking the surface of your shallow graves. All around you are headstones, some fresh with mounds of dirt, others with flat plains of grass. Biological systems inside your bodies reactivate one by one. The smell of rain is in the air, your heads ache, and your stomach growls and churns. So you guys are all in this cemetery back here behind the church. What would you like to do? Do we know each other? Yes, you are all part. Climb out of the grave. Yeah, you're all part of the mercenary company, Ghouls and Gages. What what time of day did you say it was? Uh, right now, it is early morning. So we're what out the of the hell? grave? Like, we don't have to climb out of the grave? Because that feels like the first thing to do is reach air. <laughs> you can if yeah. you want. Go ahead. Oh, I'm out. Get me out. All right. You're all capable people, and you can get out of the grave without issue. What the hell what happened? Am I, what am I seeing around me? All right, right now you uh, go ahead and make a perception roll. Ooh, in D&D Beyond. Let's see what is going on. All right, you can all make a perception roll to see what you, you look at. Random where I don't see nothing. <laughs> yeah, you, uh, you, you rolled badly there, Renegar. Hey, Bree, I'm going to put hey, an aura around your character so I can actually see her. Uh, there you go. Blue circle for you. Realizes he has dirt and mud still caking his eyeballs, so he wipes it off. Okay. Marlo, uh, you having a hard Marlo? time with your with your character sheet there? I, it worked, I think. Didn't it? Oh, there it is. Okay, so Marlo rolled the highest on perception, and she sees quite a bit more than everyone else. Uh, the the fairy, Robin, does okay as well. You guys are all lying in the center of a of the cemetery. There's headstones all around. There's a shovel lying right next to all of your shallow graves with a couple bottles of what looks like hard liquor sitting right next to it. No one is really awake out there on, in the city. You, there's like a fence separating the cemetery from the rest of the, uh, the town. Uh, you don't see anybody walking around, but uh, you do hear like the sound of horses off in the distance. Uh, the place seems pretty dead for a cemetery. Uh, uh. <laughs> I know, I, I'm a dad. I have to do that. I want to keep the shovel and the liquor. Okay. So you grab the shovel and the liquor. Uh, the The shovel is going to do 1d6 uh, bludgeoning damage. I'll remember that for the future, okay? Fair enough. Are we wearing our normal gear? No. Uh, hold on. Did I not say that? I don't know if you did. I didn't catch it if you did. It uh, looks like I deleted that part. Yeah. All of oh. your things are gone. All you've got is the clothes on your back and, and a shovel and some liquor bottles now. Hey, babe. <laughs> hey, babe. Yo. We just got a uh, tornado warning until 9.45. Take shelter now. Hooray, I'm sheltered. Uh, okay, it's until 9.45. So if we disappear all of a sudden, I apologize. Yeah, if my windows blow out or something, I will have to leave suddenly. Fair enough. I get the same feeling when Olin comes downstairs. Okay. Thanks for letting me know, Bree. Sure. Okay, so uh, you guys have your, your shovel and your liquor bottles. You've got your wits <coughs> again. Uh, what else would you like to do? Do we have, we to, do we have, do we have, do we have memory of this situation? Uh, you know that you've been hired to come out here uh, by the priest of this place. However, your memories of last night are hazy, and you're pretty sure you never made it to the priest before you uh, got interred. Do do we have okay? Can I do like a self check? Like, am I healthy? 
Okay, one by one. Uh, Bree, you guys do not have tombstones. You're in unmarked graves. Uh, and if you want to do a self check, that's a medicine uh, check. Go ahead and roll it. Okay, let me figure out how. Pretty good. 14's not bad. All right, so you give yourself a once over. And judging by the the pallor of your skin, the 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 aching in your head, and the uh, the taste you have in your mouth, other than the dirt, uh, you believe you did some heavy drinking the night before. But there was something else in the drinks that caused this to happen. You guys have ingested poison of some kind that caused some kind of torpor. Ooh, okay. Can I look around and see who else is there? Uh, you guys just looked around with your perception check. There's nobody out there that you can see. You see the 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 liquor bottles. You uh, you know that you've been poisoned, and you're pretty sure you did some heavy drinking the night before. But it's hard to be sure with all the dirt and the poison taste. Okay, do I recognize the graveyard? Uh, you're new here. You guys just arrived in town before everything goes hazy on you. Like you remember, is, ri- you remember riding into town with your buddies here, um, and then from then on, it's like pfft, things are just a a jumbled blur of of images. If you guys want to remember something from last night, maybe we could make a, a, a insight check. Insight. Ooh, did someone just log in? Um, is there a, like, a light in the distance, like a town or a, an aura of orange? Yeah, you guys are in a town right now. Um, do, do you see where your, your character thing is, like, down here at the south of the map? I do, yeah. Okay, zoom in on that, you'll see that you guys are in a town. There is a graveyard right here that you guys are in. You can get, you guys can use the map to the, your heart's content. Okay, I see that. So, like, all these other buildings should be emitting light, right? Not necessarily. This is early morning. Everybody's either asleep or just now getting their things going on. There is some light coming from your east, and you're pretty sure that would be a place that serves food or whatever. Right, I'm looking for an inn with the lights on all night. I'd like to head towards that with my shovel and my liquor. Okay. Tanith, you're inside... I'm sorry. Uh, All right. Go ahead. I was about to ask about that. Good. Yeah, Ranagar, your insight check. Uh, you don't remember much, but you do remember uh, a mug and a chair and maybe uh, talking to some people at a bar. Renegar would like to pat down all the dirty can off his clothes and make him as presentable as he can. And then uh, I'd like to cast the armor of Agathus mm-hmm. to uh, make myself a little better protected since I only have clothes on. How long does that last? That's one hour. One hour, okay. Do right. um, all of our gold and everything is still in our pockets, right? No, you don't have anything except for the clothes on your back. Damn it. Yeah. Well then, I would like to go into the church. Okay, so you guys want to split up or something? Well, okay, Molly, you're going into the inn? I'm heading towards the light, which I assume is an inn. She's part moth. She's... Renegar will follow with... I'm a human, I want the light. If we can find my gear. Um, Okay, well then let's go back to the inn, see if we can figure out where our shit is. I mean, stuff. <laughs> you can shit here. It's fine. You're a fairy. It's very small. Well, but I haven't met you yet. So, like, we're independent, no, we know right? Each other. Yeah, you guys, oh, you we guys know, know each other. other. You guys rode into town together. You guys are oh, part of the okay. same company. So, when I look around and saw people, she was there. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. I missed that. Sorry. All right. So, as you guys walk over to the light, uh, which you presume to be the inn, the the streets are made of like cobblestone, but it's like cobblestone with like a, a a thick layer of mud over it. You can see the cobblestone like peeking out underneath things, like where people walk all the time. But otherwise, things are just buried in mud. 
Um, everything's got this like brown sheen to it. The place is dirty as all hell, but not. It doesn't look like it's unkept or anything. But you guys are in the middle of like a swampy area. Um, you approach the light. It's kind of your bog standard inn made of like stone on the bottom for foundation, like wood on top. Um, it's got like two doors, a front and a back, and there's light coming from all the windows. And you can smell you, the smell of cooking comes out of a window in the back as well. Is that the building with the blue ceiling or the one with the pink ceiling? Oh, uh, hold on. Let me move your icons for a second here. Yeah, uh, it's the one with the blue right here. Oh, okay. That's not the one I was thinking. That must be the church. Okay. Yeah, the blue ceiling one has like a spire here. So there's a, it's, that's the church, the biggest one in town. Okay. I was thinking the red one was the inn. Cool. All right. Okay. So you guys are at the inn. Well, how would you like to approach this? Renegar just walk up and push through the door. Yeah, let's just bust through the door. I'm I'm going to watch him do that. Okay. So you guys just bust in the door like like you're you're opening like two doors of like a saloon door. You just kind of like walk in chest first. And uh, inside the place is fairly empty. There's like two patrons. Uh there's a a guy passed out in the back. You get the feeling that he has been here since last night. Uh, he's just sitting there just sloppy drunk with his, his head up against the wall and, and a table that's empty. There is a, a halfling sitting at the bar on a uh, on a stool with like a booster chair to help him like actually see up above the bar even with a stool. And uh, behind the bar is like a, a big green orc guy. It's like a big thick orcish man. There's as much like fat on him as muscle, but you can tell he's a big boy. And when when you come in the door, the the orc looks your way, and he's and uh, his eyes widen for a moment. And he's like, "Take a seat. Uh, what can I get you?" Renegar, I would like another dose of that poison you gave us last night. Poison? Ah, uh, no. I, I am don't... watching from the entrance way. I do what? I don't know anything about poison or no. No. Do an insight uh, check. Rabbit, rabbit. Want... Yeah, go ahead. Do an insight check if you want to figure out. Robin um, flies through and perches on the bar, and uh, and gives him like this really evil eye. All right, roll intimidate. Ranagar, your insight check, he's definitely lying to you. He knows something. Uh, and he is, his his posture and his eyes and his mouth, you don't know everything about orcish posture or uh, social cues, but this man is rather surprised to see you. Safael, you, you notice a little bit less, like you can tell the guy is hiding something, but a little bit less than Ranagar. Bree, your intimidation... Uh, you go right up to him and and like stick your chest out and look him in the eye, but the man doesn't even see that you're there. <laughs> AFK for like ninety seconds. Sorry. Okay. In that meantime, Pato, if you haven't got the hail yet, you might want to cover your windshields. I just lost two windshields to this hail. Oh shit! Great. Okay. Well, do we want to go put a blanket on it? Or something? Out of commission at this second, so. <laughs> All right. Well, she's AFK. Um, put a put a put a thick blanket or something if you're gonna do that because you need something that's gonna be able to take a little bit of a blow. Yeah. Yep, I'm on it. Be right back. My neighbor's got a 2020 Dodge Challenger. That's his baby, and he's outside with no clothes on, yelling and screaming right now. Oh no! Because no. busted his truck. windshields on his car and his truck, and yeah, it's it's fun. You remember that tornado in Granbury where you used the colander? Yes. You know those uh, blue handballs? About the size of a blue handball. That's the size of the sail. I'm assuming y'all don't have any critters outside. 
No, my creators are inside. All right, well, I'm going to close my face and quit ruining y'all's uh, recording. So, uh -huh. you're good. One drop down channel. Yeah, uh, why aren't you playing, Cody? Huh? He disappeared. Yeah. El Pato had to go uh, fix his stuff, so he'll be back here in a minute. Okay, cool. Sorry. Oh, no problem. Give him time to go uh, put something on his car. They won't blow his windows. They're getting some big hill over there. Tornado warnings are kind of a thing here. It's less dramatic. So what you game what games do you like to play? Like talk to me in the meantime. I'm gonna be a commercial. Like, what are you into? Do you like first person shooters? Do you like RPGs? What's your games? Like all of us or individual? Well, anybody who will answer, so you apparently. <laughs> Not a big picky person playing games. I love role playing games a lot. But I will play a little bit of everything. Uh, PC. I'll, I'll play, yes, PC Master Race. Fair enough. I like sitting on the couch. <laughs> My wife loves Sims. And oh, I love the Sims too. Four, Sim Four, for sure. It's dramatic because there's hail coming at our house right now. And apparently, Cody's wind shield got busted. Oh, no. Okay. I didn't know it was that serious. I'm sorry. Oh, it's totally cool. Just, yeah, we're, I can't find my keys. <laughs> Have you ever heard of tile brief? Wrong time for a commercial, but like get a tile for your keys. Seriously. I have one. I have one. Hmm. Oh, I love them. I just bought a whole bunch of those tile like sticker things to put on like the remote. What's a tile? They were under my character sheet. <laughs> Tile's a little um little Bluetooth thing that um Okay. I'm wet alarm. as hell, but I'm yeah, ready to you continue. Attach them to, you attach them to your uh, your keychain or your remote. I used like a tile mate and actually gorilla glued it to the back of our remote to so I could keep track of the thing. I've given them to everyone I know to keep track of their wallet and their tile and their keys. Okay, are we ready yeah, to continue then? Yeah, I think so. We gave one sure, to sorry, uh, John. Mandy for Christmas. I'm dripping wet, but I'm ready. Oh dear. Uh, is it bad, John? Just curious. What? Is it pretty bad out there? Uh, it's just a bunch of lightning and rain right now. I I heard a couple impacts of hail, but uh, it wasn't. There weren't big yet. You have insurance. Yeah. 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 You're out. 
they get the 66 in the garage or not. Anyways, um, ready to go back? Okay, yeah. You guys know that the innkeeper is hiding something. Um, uh, Robin's intimidation was terrible, but the the two of the you, Ranagar and Marlow, both can see the innkeeper is lying. Okay, I'm gonna walk into the building and pretend I don't know them, and just come up to the bar and be like, "Hey." Can I get a gin and tonic? He looks at you and he arches one eyebrow and he's like, got anything to pay for that? And as he says so, this guy, the guy in the back, like the old dude that slumped over, he's he's, he's looking at you guys. He goes, like, oh, ghosts ain't welcome in here. Not welcome. You're dead. So stay dead. Now get. Oh, blah, and he vomits on the floor. I'm like Renegar looks at the bar keep and goes, Well, if you don't want these ghosts haunting your bar, maybe you could give us back our things. I don't have your things. Don't you? Nope. I can't do an intimidation check, can I? Because I'm useless. You can if you want to. Um Okay. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, you got yourself an eight. He is unimpressed. Like, can I he, do another one? You already did yours. You had your chance. This that that counts for the whole interaction. Um, so does my insight count for the whole interaction as well? Like, would I realize he's lying or telling me the truth about our gear? Yeah, you have a good, pretty good beat on this guy uh, right now. Um, about your things, he doesn't. He, you can tell he's he either is telling the truth or thinks he's telling the truth that he does not have your things. I'm going to walk over to said drunk. Ghost, go, go home! I grab him by the shirt and step around and uh, jam my finger down his mouth and see if I can't make him puke some more. Back to the grave with law! And he, he spews all over you. Ew. I don't know what you're uh, going for with what... that. So I, uh, go now that he is... so I, go... I want to bother the bartender. Okay. I'm not sure what to ask him, though. Um... All right, so... Whenever were, you're... We, were we in here the other night? Like, can I use investigation? Uh, yeah, you can use investigation. Like, you want to, like, take in the whole room, like a Sherlock sort of thing? Oh, well, I was thinking, like, like, ask him something, uh, cute, <coughs> but maybe <laughs> that's not how it works. It's fine. We Sure, I'll take in the whole room. Let's do that. Okay, go ahead. Roll for investigation. Um, Eki, there, sorry. Ah, uh, my Pato. rolls are uh, so Eki. garbage. Always, that's... always. That's one of my abilities. Okay. So I'll do Marlo's so investigation do- thing first, and I'll we'll deal with uh, your awakened mind thing, okay? All right. So, Marlo, your investigation, you rolled above a 10, so you, you take in a few things. Um, you can tell that the bartender is sweating now. Um, he's got a wrist tattoo, kind of like yours. Like, uh, you guys, you guys all have wrist tattoos like a, a a tattoo of a rose on your wrist right now it, it looks fresh okay you might not have noticed it coming out of the grave but now that you now that you've kind of given yourself a once over and you're looking around you see that all three of you have a rose on your wrist it looks like a fresh tattoo it's like it has red uh red pink skin around it or except for you Whoa. mr drow this guy has a wrist tattoo as well but he has a pair of pruning shears as opposed to your rose there's a blood stain on the the floor, just over in a, on a table, like behind you, a little bit away from the drunk. And uh, your medical knowledge tells you that this blood is maybe a day old, judging by the color. What the hell? Okay, now the awakened mind thing that you've got going on, Tanith. You asked me what I was going to do with the drunk. 
Yeah. Renegar is going to just yeah. stare Wink in the eyes and start speaking to him tele <coughs> with telepathy. And basically is going to start promising to haunt him and do very nasty things that will soak his soul to the to the bone, you know, and it just you know, make him think the most evil thoughts of what's going to happen to him if he doesn't really start answering some questions. All right. So uh, at first, whenever you, you start doing your things like, ah, you don't scare me, ghost. I've killed ghosts better than you. And then you need to make an intimidation roll against this guy if you want to do that. Could I uh, do it as an advantage since it's telepathy? It should be. Kind yeah, of he's crazy. drunk. Yeah. He's drunk. You're psychic. Go ahead. <laughs> Sorry. I gotta figure out what the heck's up with that. I want to use my wisdom and insight at some point. I did the, do that with uh, advantage. It just completely disappears on roll twenty for some reason. Weird. What did you roll? And then thirteen plus three. Oh, a what? A and a thirteen with a plus three. Okay, so there's eighteen total. All right, so yeah, this guy. He, uh, as you begin doing things to his mind, at first he's all bluster and he's like, I have killed ghosts, don't you? And then he kind of trails off and he's looking into your eyes and they begin to water and he can't really take his eyes away from you anymore. So are, are you picking his brain for information or do you want him to talk? Yeah, I don't really have any reason to, or any ability to read the mind or anything like that, but he, uh, I do want him to, you know, start telling me things. All right. All right. Basically, my, my questions to him are going to be what he knows about these ghosts, um, what happened to us, were we here, just kind of give us a, a rundown on what he knows in the last little while and why uh, we were woke up in graves. He Okay, so he... He's still looking into your eyes. He can't look away. He's like, "I seen you die, I seen you die." And the the and the barkeep interrupts. Him. He's like, and he he goes, "Templeton, don't you do it? Don't you talk nonsense to these people?" And he he looks like he's about to throw something at the guy. So uh, Robin flies over to Templeton and kind of starts buzzing around his head, making him a little dizzy. And is like, Templeton, Templeton, hey, Templeton, what happened? Why Bar am I a ghost? Bartender's like, don't listen to that old drunk. The man's been coming in here and getting pickled for the last tw uh, for the last 10 years. He's retired. Don't listen to him. He doesn't know anything about anything. Robin ignores uh, him and continues to do what she was doing. All right, so, uh, so you know there's a tattoo on Templeton's wrist. Templeton's got no tattoo on his wrist. Templeton is the drunk, yeah? Yeah, Templeton's the drunk guy in the corner. Okay, just clarifying. So you guys have got the attention of the, the halfling at the bar now, too. And he's he's looking your way, but he's got, like, a little smile on his face. Like, he's he's wiggling his legs and, like, uh, and shaking around, like, limbering up his limbs like like he can smell a good fight about to start. And he's doing like little little air boxing moves in the air, like, oh yeah, it's gonna happen. It's gonna happen. So Robin, um, Robin, her natural grace ends up like running into Templeton's head. Not the part with the vomit though. Ah oh, God, what there's flies in here. Bull, you get it. You get exterminator in here, and he tries to change the subject and look away, but he can't. So I kind of bop him, and the bopping is is kind of strong considering I'm a barbarian. That's gonna leave attention. a mark, huh? All right, so he's all like, right. I roll. Renegar's gonna let him go while Robin's doing all this, and just stand there and maintain eye contact. But I'd like to uh, kind of circle around him a little bit, keeping his focus so I can still keep an eye on the barkeep and the halfling. Okay. So, uh, make a perception check. <coughs> Good. Okay. So, the barkeep, his full attention is on you, and he's reaching under the bar for something. But he hasn't taken it out yet, whatever it is. So, the drunk begins to talk. He's like, you... 
you all you all rode in here last night during the rainstorm. Yeah, you you were sitting right over there when you died. Was damnedest thing, really. How did we die, Templeton? Oh, you uh, you came in. You ordered drinks. You you were you all had mugs. You were wet, soaking from the rain. Just rode into town, and you started talking to old Red Hand and his friends. You all had a pretty good time. You were laughing and and ordering more drinks, and then suddenly you just just fell in your cups. One of you one of you was standing up, and you fell down on the table, hit yourself, bled out on the floor right there. Bled out? I don't know. It, I don't see like I used to. You, there's your blood on the floor right there. Not you. I think that would empty a uh, uh, fairy, ma'am. You would have died losing that much blood. But one of you guys, you all had your your big thick cloaks on and such. But one of you fell down right there. It was talk. We people were talking for a while, and then the guys they they took care of your bodies, took you away. In less than twelve hours. Can Let's, you? Why were we? Um, why are we talking to the priest? He's the one that supposedly hired you out. Like your contract is with the priest. God, um, God. Tell, can you tell us if we know if this red hand is the priest or if he's somebody else? Oh, red hand, red, red hand's boy that's been around here his whole life. He drew it. He's one of the circle. He's he's good kid. A little angry, but he's good kid. He looked really, really sad that you guys, uh, you guys died last night. He said he'd take care of the bodies, and he and his friends took you away to the priest. Now please just leave me please. alone. I'm gonna let Renegar be, and then turn back toward the barkeep and the halfling. So the halfling looks excited, like he's about to start clapping. The barkeep uh, still has his hand under the bar. And his shoulders are squared to you guys, like he's ready for just about anything. Well, gentlemen, Renegar seems to be interested in what you guys have planned for us. Would you like to continue this in a very brusque and violent manner, or could we just dissolve this in a very quiet and talkative manner? The orc is like, don't want no trouble. It seems you I am call. still at the bar, and I would like to sidle up to the halfling and say, N -n -n -n, "I don't. Do you know? Hey. Oh, nice to you meet you. What's going on here? Hi. Hello. My name is Marlo. Oh yeah, Marlo, huh? That's a nice, nice strong name for a human. You tall folk all got strong names. That's great. I'm Sprig Brightbush. I am." Nice to meet you, Spring. Are we gonna what fight? Do you know about what's going on here? Are you? No, certainly not. Are we all gonna fight? Are we gonna have a good old-fashioned bar fight? Well, maybe later, but not yet. Oh, he his face falls. He looks a little disappointed. Well, go pick a fight with that uh, Regnar guy <laughs> if you want a bar fight. I just want to talk. He looks like a tough customer. I'd love to take a, look, a swing at him. Well, what? You want to talk? Okay, okay. Hold on. He, he like, drains one of his little halfling cups. Hey, what's going on around here? Do you know? Uh, for what I gather right now, you guys are ghosts, and that's really cool and exciting. Love to be well, a part of that someday. Doesn't feel like it. <laughs> well, can make you a ghost. If you, you wouldn't like that. What is it like being dead? I've always wondered. Well, I haven't figured out yet, since I'm apparently still alive, despite being a ghost. The mystery continues, then. Oh, well. Indeed. So, why do you think I'm a ghost? Well, that man over there said he saw you die, and, uh, here you are. If you're a zombie or something, I'd, I'd like to tell you that my brain is not tasty. I have spent most of my life being punched in the face and then drinking my troubles away. <sighs> I understand. However, I appear to not be a ghost, as I am me, so not a ghost or a zombie, I'm just me. 
But tell me about why you think that. Well, I mean, that guy said you were dead, and you guys are all covered in dirt like you just came out of the ground. I just put two and two together. You know, I've got a sharp noodle. Fair enough. Anyway, Cheers. if you're not dead, I mean, you're going to do something about that. Uh, about the dirt, like certainly. Fire. I need a shower, as I mean, it were, as do my companions. <laughs> this guy looks like he's about to beat you over the head with something. Are you going to do oh, something here, about which, that? Which guy? <laughs> the orc, the, bar, the bartender. Nice enough guy, but uh, looks like he's a little nervous around ghosts, you know what I mean? Oh, no, I just need a shower. Say, can I get a room or some clean water. I don't know. Is this something where they have running water? Sorry. <laughs> uh, you can you can get a room, but you have no money on you at the moment. And the innkeeper doesn't look like he wants you around. Oh, okay. Well, is... <coughs> Renegar is there, is there an, uh well in town? Say, is there a well or... Uh, common water place sorry oh yeah we got running water around here although it's uh not something you would drink you can take a bath in it but uh from what i can tell the the locals mostly drink the beer and and liquor and such maybe some wine if you want to get some pure water you got to go to the druids they probably have that kind of thing on end i'm just looking for public running water yeah outside in the courtyard i've taken a bath there a couple times i got a Got some weird looks from people, but, you know, nobody really cares about halflings when they take a bath in your fountain. Right. People care more about humans. Uh, thank you. Guess we'll see. Renegar is going to look into the at the barkeep and use his telepathy to ask him um, if he has any information that he could give us and we can leave peacefully. We would like to know where this red hand or this priest is so that we could be on our way and find our things. Stay out of my head, elf, or there'll be trouble. No trouble. If you just give us a little help, it will cost you nothing, and we will leave without causing a ruckus. All right. I could take a bath right here, I suppose. Don't make it weird. You don't have to take a bath here. <laughs> Listen, if you're if you're having a hard time with your health, or maybe your head hurts or something, there's an apothecary down the street. You can go ahead and visit them if you want. Also, there's the church. Renegar is no, asking if that will be where the priest is located, or does he have a house at this time of day that we could talk to him? Priest should be in the church by now. I don't know. Just get out of my inn, you people. You people, I mean, you look like you die last night and you come back. Well, if we uh, die I suppose come the back, church is where we belong then. What is your name, fair barkeep? Bull. Well, Bull, All thank right. you for your help. Thank you, Halfling, for your help. Oh, no problem. You sure we're not going to have a bar fight? I was really looking forward to it. Well, I mean... The fight uh, I could punch you or something, but then I'd have to patch you up afterwards. That'd be awkward. Hang on, hang on. He, like, slaps himself in the face a couple times, like, I'm ready. Let's do it. Let's do it. Oh, uh, all right. Uh, fair, I, yeah, like, are we going to make that. this weird? Because we can make it weird. Oh, I'm a halfling. You punch me, you're going to feel weird. That's all right, though. I was gonna walk oh, my lord, door. I really want to punch him. <laughs> Okay. No. Okay. I pass. Sorry, <laughs> we're out the door. Okay. So okay. as you as you turn to leave, a um, uh, the the bartender relaxes his arm and allows you to go. Um, as are you guys going out the front? Or are you going out the back? The front, I suppose. Okay, the way you came in. Okay. okay. Yeah. Okay. So as you guys are going out. A couple guys are uh, outside. They're they're passing you. Both of them are, are uh, cloaked up for the morning, but they they look like they're just ready to get inside. But as you pass, like one of them, uh, a half elf guy with like uh, black hair, uh, looks at you and uh, looks back to the door. That looks back like he's surprised to see you again, 
and uh, but like his his lips turn down a frown, but then he schools his face very quickly and goes right past you into the door to talk to to Bowl and the other guys. Renega, did we we all notice this or no? Uh, go ahead and roll a perception check for all of you. You can see the guy gave you a double take. Whether or not you read his face properly depends on you. What was the check? Sorry, perception? Perception, yes. Everybody's rolling tens today. Bree? Bree? Six. Okay. So none of you notice that the guy looks very um, weird and, un and displeased to see you. They all go inside. What would you like to do now? We're in the well, church. No, you guys oh, are outside. Yeah, you Where are you going? To the oh, church, to the right? Church. All right, one at a time. Molly says church. Jim? Renega, I would like to go see the church and the priest. Maybe he can help us find our gear. Feeling a bit naked without my armor. Okay. Mm. All right. So the church, it's a large stone building dedicated to the god Theodore, where priests and clerics perform rituals to stave off the taint of the Blightwood. You guys know this because of your research. And they also hold religious services there. Um, when you go inside, like the place is pretty expansive. Uh, I actually have a map for this. Hang on just a moment. When you go inside, it's pretty expansive. There's pews and an altar, a couple statues, that sort of thing. And uh, there's there's stained glass on the windows and such. And whenever you whenever you cross the threshold the threshold into the church, you feel like a powerful sort of like pain in your belly. Like there's this squirming sort of like ah some something's wrong with your with your uh, stomach or intestine area and you double over for a moment but then once you're inside and it goes on for a couple moments it passes and you straighten up this is not the deity that I'm associated with I assume correct no uh, okay the Theodore is the god of purity um, he's about I mean, he is about healing the sick, but I don't think that you are pledged for this particular guy. Do we see any roses, like the tattoo on her arm, anywhere? Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, why don't you roll a perception check? Okay. Inlaid in some of the bases of the statue and, and hidden on certain parts of the uh, stained glass, there are indeed roses, like, uh, like in a symbolic sort of way. Like, there's like a stylized sort of rose inscription on a lot of things. The place is strangely quiet. The, it looks like the clerics and the priests are out doing whatever it is they do right now. And there is an enormous sort of crack down the center of the church's foundation. Well, that's not portending anything, is it? No. No, I would never foreshadow anything. I was looking anything. for a bath. Well, there, uh, you don't know if there's a bath here, but you guys said you wanted to go to the church, right? We're looking yeah, for, for the church. Sure. Said... Yeah. Okay. So... I'm an older man, like an older balding man with uh, with gray, like speckled with black hair, comes out from the back, and uh, he sees you all and says, "Oh, hello, be welcome in Theodore's church. What can I do for you?" I'd like to know why there's a rose on my arm. I didn't sign up for this. Rose, he looks down at your wrist. Well, I'm I'm sorry, it's a tiny wrist. You have to fly pretty close to him, but. Upon inspection, he's like, 
I don't know. It's it's a rose. Looks like you got a tattoo, and recently, I might add. Renegar does not like tattoos. He would not take one willingly. Well, then I suggest you take this up with your tattooist, sir. I didn't do anything to you. Who are you, anyway? Apparently, Uh, her at least hired us. Hello. Um, I have come for a cleansing, apparently. A cleansing, you say? Well, I am Head Priest Terran, and I do all sorts of cleansings, but... uh, what are you? What do you need cleansed from you? You don't look like you're unhealthy, although a little dirty. No, I am certainly not. However, I am a whatever of whatever we decided. You're a cleric of. I'm an acolyte of whatever. And then be welcome, sister. You're welcome here in this church. This is the church that uh, services the entire town of Purity and the uh, and the place where we keep up the rituals that keep the blight at bay at our town's border. Thank you. I appreciate the welcome. I am looking for, or I am seeking... Uh... Father, what's his name that hired Service. you? Service. I'm, I'm seeking... Uh... Wait, are you the mercenaries? Should we be? You you guys are part of Ghouls and Gages, right? Oh, yes. well. We've been over this. <laughs> you guys are mercenaries. Yes, no, but I, I know I I'm was also seeking him. I'm also seeking asylum for my uh, compatriots. Oh, no problem. Uh, you guys are welcome here, like I said. And if you people are the mercenaries I hired, then uh, we have a lot to discuss. So it was you that hired us. So what now? I said, so it was you that hired us. Yes, indeed. I uh, tried. To, I commissioned the ghouls and gauges for a couple members to come out here and help us take care of our monster problem. However, I expected well. you sometime, uh, I don't know, Yesterday, the day before, from what I could tell. And I expected you more armed and armored. We expected ourselves to be more armed and armored. What happened? Maybe less dirty as well. Indeed. What? Well, we, we were thinking the very same thing when we dug ourselves out of graves in your cemetery. Out of graves? My cemetery? Well, you, got it. you wouldn't be the first mercenaries to pass out and wake up with a tattoo and buried in a shallow grave, but just... it's rather unusual in my town. I was going to ask if this happened often. Well, if it's not that unusual, it is unusual. Please specify, Mr. Biden. Uh, my name is Taryn. <laughs> you calling me Mr. Biden? That's weird. I don't know who this Biden guy is. Fair enough. <laughs> Mr. Terran, please specify. What What do you mean? I'm just saying that mercenaries are known for their wild and woolly ways, and that's why we hire them. They're a rough people. I can understand you getting drunk every now and then. When did you arrive in town? Yesterday, like you expected. What happened? Did Recently. you Recently. Did you avail yourselves of our inn? Bowl over there may be a little brusque, but he's pretty welcoming. We did, apparently, but none of us can remember doing so. Oh, very well. You're here now. Come with me. Come with me. And he, uh, he beckons to you as he goes back into this door back here and into this office over here. All right, let's do that. All right. Now, as you pass the uh, the altar, like the closer you get to it, it seems like that pain in your stomach gets worse and worse. It's like a hot wire is twisting through your insides. And as soon as you're beyond the threshold of the door where you can't see the altar anymore, it goes away. It's gone. 
can you tell us more about your religion and your deity and you know who you serve and what it all means maybe the life the answer to life universe and everything <laughs> well i'm not sure if this humble servant Sorry, has that sort of thing however the god theodore was once a minotaur a hero as a matter of fact he was ascended to godhood and became the symbol of purity and healing and uh because of this this is the guy they worship yes because of this we founded this church here to contain the blight of the blightwood i assume you know about the blightwood and how it tends to spread like a metastasizing cancer so is this place a maze a maze no this is just a church. Not all minotaurs live in the center of labyrinths, young lady. You read too much. Oh, I see. Renegar, I would like to know about this red hand character in your town. Red hand, red. You're talking about Mirkor. Ah, yes, we. I know Mirkor. He's an angry young half elf, but he's all right. His heart's in the right place. I hope it can stay there. I'm looking for my things. Renegar would like them back, and the word is, he is the one who put us in those shallow graves. Really? Mirkor has gone a little far if this is a prank. I hope he's not doing anything stupid. You better hope it's a prank. And considering, be to things back over. considering who his parents are and everything, I just, I just wish he was able to do something with that anger of his. It's, it doesn't do to see the Emperor's bloodline wasted like that. I don't know. If he has my oh, thing, goodness. What does sideways mean? <laughs> I think Tanith just turned himself that way. <laughs> oh, no. He's dying. Now, to the reason I brought you all here, you uh, may have noticed the crack in our foundation of the church, yes? It's pretty hard to miss. Seems like it's pretty seems like the gods have lost favor with your church. Well, not exactly. The blight, as I mentioned before, is always trying to get out and get in. The the blight is a sort of uncontrolled growth of aberrant behavior in nature. It was tainted by a battle a long time ago. And things there just don't work the way they should in the natural world. But it's also an aggressive sort of thing. The town here supports a large contingent of priests and druids that go and uh, perform rituals to contain the blight and drive it back and keep it in this particular area. If we didn't do that, who knows how far the thing would spread. The church here is the source of our main ritual that protects this large area that allows people to live here. As you can see, part of our oh, town here. is actually, uh, has been taken by the Blight, and that was because of a thing that happened a year ago. Some thing grew down under the barrier, underground, and came up underneath our church, cracked the foundation, and from, from the tunnel that it made, terrible abominations poured out and attacked the town. We were able to drive them back and reestablish the barrier, in a sphere shape now, let me tell you. No longer just a dome. We, we learned our lesson there. But I need to know that we've done our cleansing properly. And I need to know that the creatures of the Blight are contained. That's why you're here. So you said you guys have been working to eradicate this stuff for years? Um, all the druids and everything? Eradicate? No. Contain? Yes. I have... No idea how to eradicate the Blight. We've done our best. We've tried to make incursions into the Blight, perform rituals, create little safe zones inside. But the the uh, force that, uh, that makes the Blight do what it does is pernicious and persistent. It's always looking for cracks in your defenses, and eventually it gets in. Even this town is probably doomed, depending on how long I live and how long this church can stand. Is there anybody we get to fight? I imagine so. The creatures in the Blight are rather aggressive and bloodthirsty. But, you know, you're mostly here for your, your investigation 
skills combined with your willingness to spill blood. How many kids are in your town? Oh, quite a few. We have support staff here. The priests and druids can't grow and and uh, prepare all the food and water and lumber and animals and such. And so we have a pretty functional town. It's just it's here as a as a joint venture between the clergy and the druid circle. That's our main reason for being here. We have no exports or imports. Have you all made any progress over the years? Um, have you been able to tip away at it? Is it still the same as it was? Quite the opposite, in fact. The blight continues to grow, inch by inch. We do our best, but I have the feeling the dam is going to break someday. And uh, hopefully it'll be sometime after I pass. I don't want to be around for when the blight can spread uncontrolled. Can you tell me what the rose means to your church? The rose? It is a symbol of carefully guided growth. It's like a, it's like a cultivation of your inner spirit. Say, a rose doesn't really bloom that particularly brightly or well if it's not taken care of. Yes, you have to, you have to prune it. You have to feed it. You have to do many things to get the best the 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 most bold colored rose. Well, it's like that with your faith as well. That's what our symbol is. Okay, anybody that raises roses, do do you have to cut them down in the spring or something in order for them to flourish in the fall? That's actually true. That you have to do that. Yes. As a matter of fact, you do have to prune your roses if you yeah, want them you to, to really flourish. Okay. That's something good to remember. Also, I'm not supposed to be doing all this. I'm supposed to be really dumb. <laughs> so, do you have any questions for me? I wants to know... What you would like, where you would like us to go and investigate this? Well, uh, I would, in fact, like you to investigate the blight just outside the town. Kill a few monsters. Stir some things up. See what pops out from its hiding places. The blight has been pretty quiet lately, and I'm concerned that it's uh, expending its resources in another way. Hmm should be a shame if this red hand were turned out to be a agent of the blight. I'd hate to have to put him down. Miracor is no agent of the blight. He's a druid with the circle. I don't think he would ever do that sort of thing. It, It's not really my place to say. But the kid has been through a lot. And I think the last thing on his mind would to be let the, letting the blight spread. Let's hope you're right. Because if he doesn't he better be able to hand us our gear. Listen, I don't know what exactly happened to you last night, whether you got drunk and uh, had a very wild night or if you were the victim of some foul play. But if you want my suggestion, if you want to get paid, go out there, kill a few things, and see what's going on. That is we'll the do that. We'll do that if you ask around and figure out what happened to us because you know who to ask. And um, we didn't bury ourselves. <laughs> I uh, certainly hope not. That would be a night of drinking that I have uh, not seen since I was a very young man. That is a whole nother level of partying. There's nothing else you can tell us about the blight. We must be on our way. Mm, other than that our church kills the blight and uh, keeps it at bay, and that it's your job to help us do so? No, not really. If you have any specific questions, maybe you can come back and ask me. I have lots of books here. This is not the first generation of priests that lived here and, and served in this temple. 
Are we able to stay here in some quarters? Because obviously we have no money now. Hmm. Yeah. You know, I think you could. I have a couple uh, cells for uh, like that monks would stay in or priests would stay in. You're welcome to use those. Also, a shower would be excellent. <laughs> Indeed. For <They're>... everyone. <laughs> All right. I do have a uh, a bit of running water in the back here over by the cemetery. Lovely. Thank you. Our favorite place. <laughs> it would appear so. All right. What do you guys want to do now? I want my stuff. All right. How would you go about that? I guess we need to track down the red hen and his friends. Let's he, say that he, said he, he said he was a halfling, and there was the halfling at the bar. No, half elf. He said he was a half elf. Half elf druid. Whatever, half elf. There was a. It was the one at the bar, half elf or a halfling. The guy that looked at you, as a half elf. The guy that Molly was talking to. No, the guy that Very Molly enough. was talking to was a halfling. There's lots of half seas here. But there was a half elf in the bar. He was walking into the bar as you guys were walking out. Well, let's go back. Oh, I was talking to a, a halfling, yeah. Okay, cool. All right, so you guys are going back to the inn? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I need to talk to the talk to the person of the same race because that's not not uh, assumptive at all. No, not at all, not at all. The drunk might be there. He's probably more useful. But we'll see. Okay. So let's see. You guys go back to the inn. All right. So you're going to walk in the front door. Inside, the the place is largely unchanged. The halfling is gone. Apparently, he's finished whatever he's doing. The The barkeep is behind the bar. The the uh, drunk that you guys talked to before is uh, asleep with his face down on the table in the back. Everybody roll a perception check. Dang. I'm still trying to find it. Sorry. That's okay. Uh, Bree got a 16 and Jim got an 18. No, I got no, a 20. I see two perception checks. Oh, that was from before. My that bad. A 20. Okay. Your your fairy eyes see uh, the bar is largely unchanged. The guy in the back, the, uh, the patron, is, uh, even though he looks like he's sleeping on the table, he's not breathing. The, the guy... Oh, the, no. Is he the, is he the half... Elf guy? No, the half elf is not here currently. But the patron at the table, what race is he? Yeah, he? Templeton. He's a he's a human. He's old, and he was talking oh, to you guys like, "Get out of here, ghost!" <laughs> he's dead now. He's not breathing. Templeton's dead. Is he really not breathing? He's not breathing. Can I like medicine check that? Yeah, go ahead. What does that mean? Oh. I don't see anything. Oh, I got a medicine check for, well, it was 15. This time it's 11. I've not seen it in roll 20. Are you rolling on uh, on beyond 20? Yes. Is anybody else seeing it? I don't see anything. I don't need I don't need Do you have our token selected, maybe? You don't. I don't think you have to have a token selected. I probably have to reconnect somehow. Maybe so. Now it's doing that dumb device logger thing. Yeah, I don't. I don't see you actually logged into roll twenty. You might have been disconnected. Probably needs a refresher page. Yeah. <coughs> I'll shut it all down. Be back in a second. 
Usually it just takes me refreshing my browser, but who knows? Yeah. Hit F5. I honestly don't remember what role I was trying to do. Sorry. Uh, medicine check. <laughs> yeah, it's stupid. Hmm, I'm still not seeing anything coming up. I don't think it hailed here. Not so far. Which is nice for us. Now oh, here comes something. I had to open my big map. No, not I'm I'm looking there's there's a roll that just came through. Uh let me see here. Ah, there you go. Medicine eight. You rolled terribly on that one. So yeah, the guy's not breathing. Um I no, I always do. <laughs> oh, wow. I'm so good at medicine, but then you roll a one, and it's like, well, suddenly I forget. Anyway, I'm okay. I'm a garbage person. That's fine. <laughs> so the way the guy looks, it confounds your medicinal knowledge. But the guy is not breathing; he's got no pulse. So as you get, as you're bent over the dude, a crossbow bolt whizzes over your head and sticks into the wall behind you and the guy. Oh and, boy! And two other figures pile in through the front door, uh, both of them with crossbows as well. And it's time to roll for initiative. And of course, I didn't have my tokens with. Hang on. Hang on. to the map layer. Let me bring a couple guys in here. All right, so two men that are cloaked come in with uh, crossbows and they're also aiming them your way. The bartender is behind the bar. Let me just put a person over there for him as well. I know I don't have an orc token to put down for him. Okay, so remember, you've got to have your, your token selected whenever you, you click on initiative or else it won't show up. Is there no response? I feel like I I lost. Hmm. I don't see any initiative. Oh, I see initiative rolls from you. I see a fourteen and a fourteen. However, you do need to select your. Um... Oh, I didn't put you guys on the map. Hang on. Uh, my bad. That was that was terrible. Okay. Here's the bar. Forget the name up at the top there. Okay. Okay. 
I have to re-roll our initiative now? No, you don't have to re-roll. Sapphire, yeah. Sa- um, click on your token, which is the little person right there, like the little blue uh, silhouette thing. Click on that so it's selected, and then roll for initiative. Oh, this okay. is really familiar. I have a red dot, a green dot, a blue dot, a settings looking dot, and then a yeah. so day and sun dot. That's cool. That means you have your thing selected. Now go to your beyond 20, like your character sheet, and roll for initiative there. What you're you're determining is what order you're going in combat. I feel like I've encountered this in in another life. Shut up, Bree. I only had a week to prepare this. Okay, so you rolled that. Great. Okay, now you're in the turn order. So if you would like to see where you are in the initiative turn order, like the the there's a little tracker on the left-hand side of roll 20. There's a little um, clock-looking thing, a little clock icon. If you click on that, it'll have the turn order in descending order. Like the one of the cloaked men will be going first, then it's you, then it's Robin, then another cloaked guy, and then the bartender. Hey, hey, on my screen, John, the turn order says cloaked, Cypheo, cloaked, cloaked, and that's it. Yeah. Sure. Sure. Hold on just a second. I got to rename one of these guys as bartender. Boop. There we go. So have you brought up your turn order thing? Yeah. So I have the red, green, blue. No. Um. Right now you've got your token selected, and that's great. You rolled for initiative, and that was successful. Now, on the left-hand side of roll 20, there's a little clock icon right below the cloud, right above the die. If you click on that, it'll show you the turn order that we've got going on. That's something different than token settings. Sorry. I'm being stupid. No, um, I'm talking about on the very left-hand side of the screen on roll 20, not on your token, but like, you know how like the, the screen has like buttons on it over on the left hand side. Yeah. Okay. The clock should be where you're looking for, like click on the clock and you'll see the turn turn order. order. Yeah. That's the one. So now you'll see that the bartender is going first. He's attacking you guys. Okay. And then the two cloaked men. So here we go. Ready? So the bartender, having already shot at you and missed, is starting to reload his crossbow from behind the bar. Saphael, what would you like to do now that somebody has fired at you and two men have come in the front door with crossbows as well? I retreat. I am not an aggressor. Okay. I find cover. So you want to get behind a table or something? I want to go behind the bar. Actually, there's a bartender behind the bar, but I will consider that later. Yeah, he's the guy that shot at you. You sure you want to be behind there with him? No, I'll go back uh, a ways. Okay, I'll consider you behind a table. That will add a couple points to your armor class if they attack you. All right, Robin, what would you like to do today? Well, I am... Uh, I take out my big old sword that's like enormous and it doesn't seem like a fairy should be able to carry that thing. You're not carrying anything right now. You guys are weaponless except for a shovel. Oh shit. Okay, well then I ask Sifael for the shovel. And, and I hold on to it. And then um... It's my fucking shovel. <laughs> do you want me to die do you want me to die I am a barbarian I can take some hits but I can also dish them out I'm not sure I've met you before yes you have we're in the same party Fine, take the shovel, but I'm Thank gonna you. ask you for something. Okay, hide behind this table, and I'm gonna go beat some guys over the head with a shovel. Deal, I will heal you after. Thank you. All right, so 
Let's do this. What are you going to do, Robin? I got to see how far I can go. Hold Oh, what do you know? It's 30 feet to the door. It's like somebody planned this out. Crazy. Okay. Um, should I do unarmed strike? Or You're using shovel? a shovel, right? Yeah. <laughs> what would be better? You've got simple weapons. Proficiency. Go ahead and roll a d20. We'll see if it hits. Ah, I'm coughing. Okay. You're proficient with him, which makes it a plus two. And then your strength is another, what was it, plus two? That you have a plus your strength modifier, right? Yeah. Okay. So, yes, you you haul off and hit this guy with a shovel. Go ahead and roll a, a d6 to determine the damage. Okay, so you knock this guy right in the face with the shovel head. He, um, his, his head, like, snaps to the side, and he falls over next to his buddy, like, near the guy's feet, tripping him up. And he's cool. prone. All right, the guy that's prone attempts to fire at uh, at you with his crossbow. He's going to be at a disadvantage because he's all tangled up in his buddy's legs. So let me... Oh, oh, oh sorry. Am I in a position to help? You're hiding behind a table right now. Yeah. Um, I need to... Go Can I use my dagger and, like, poke him? Hold on. Uh, Brie first. What's up? I needed to be ragey. Um... You can do rage as a bonus action. Yeah, rage as a bonus action. All right, so that will be come into effect next turn because you didn't rage before you attacked. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so he fires at you with a crossbow, disadvantage, and uh, it goes wide and hits a wall instead. Uh, Sci-Fi-L, if you want to help, you can actually run up next to them and start poking at people, but you'll have to wait for your next turn, okay? You spent your turn taking cover behind a table. Cool? Fair enough. But she doesn't have a weapon. That's true. You can punch at people or use a spell. I can use a spell. Okay. So the guy that's right next to his friend, you just knocked you just knocked this guy into the other guy. The other guy shoots at uh at uh, Safael with his crossbow. Da, da, da. So like okay, in in a learning how to use the spells that we've been given, uh, like kind of a master class, can I just drop 30 gallons of water on these people with a cantrip? Uh, you can use water on people. Um, like if you find a creative way to use it, just ask me first and then we'll, uh, we'll talk about it. All right. So home dude just, uh, he, uh, takes aim at Saphiel and fires at her uh, while she's behind the table. You're not wearing any armor right now. You're behind a table. He rolled a 16. So the crossbow bolt comes over, hits you in the shoulder for three points of piercing damage. Uh, so you've got a crossbow bolt sticking out of your shoulder. You should subtract three HP from your uh, from your pool right now, okay? So... Okay. All right. The way you do that is you... You, no, uh, I, well, you know, this is all in theory, but, like, I was just thinking, like, it'd be super funny to just drop water on that. Yeah, we'll, we'll discuss it on your turn, which is cool. Just, uh, hold on a second, you we'll, need, we'll come around to you. You need to take your three damage off of your character. The way you do it is you click on your character with your mouse, and, um, you'll see three dots on the top, and one has a number in it. You just change that number to my uh, three less than what it is. Okay, sorry, I I was just asking. You keep doing what you're doing. No, like you just got hit with a crossbow bolt. So I need you to go to your token or go to your character sheet. And subtract the three HP that that crossbow bolt just took from you, 
off of your character. So you're keeping track of how much HP you have before you die or go out knocked unconscious. So I think your three, character... Three, you said. Yeah, minus three. Okay. Okay. All right. Now, um, Renegar, it's your turn. Renegar is going to crouch down behind the table near Sifael and uh, shoot at the cloaked man that Breon hit with the uh, shovel with a Eldritch Blast. Okay. Uh, did you roll a 20? Yeah, you rolled a 20. My goodness. Oh, it's 15 plus 5. Never mind. Okay, so that's a hit. Go ahead and roll for damage. It already oh. did when I... Oh. Okay, so your Eldritch, okay, so your Eldritch Blast comes out of your hand, uh, hits the guy in the torso, and just blows him back through the door. You can... You're an experienced man. You know a killing shot when you see one. That man is D-E-D -E -D dead. I didn't catch this earlier, but I want to ask, is the bartender engaging us or just t making ready? Oh, he was the first person to shoot at you. Okay, I didn't catch that. My bad. I thought it was one of the cloaked men. Yeah, it's all good. Okay, a bartender uh, shoots at Robin over there. He, he uh, like, climbs over the bar, gets on top of a table, and shoots at Robin. Pew. Pew. So can I see this from my angle? I can't tell if that's a full wall or not. Yeah, just assume that you can see it. The, my my map kind of sucks. Okay, he hits you for four, uh, Robin. Uh, Bree, we can't we can't hear you. Okay, it's your turn, uh, Sapphire. What do you want to do? We need to get out. Um, we got to take them down. Oh, so here's, the, so here, here's the deal, Sifael. If you try to escape and run out the door, you will have to pass by that character. When you pass by the character, he will attempt to attack you. It's like yeah, giving him a free shot. Yeah, and depending on how far you can if you can't go far enough, you may have to stand next to him, and he will still get another shot. And then he will have two shots at you while you're trying to run away. So you could take cover, or you could attempt to fight as well. But if you try to run, you will take more damage. Do you have Most any likely. damage spells? Well, what do you guys think? Well, we're yeah, not allowed to talk about it. Hey, you're you're playing yeah, your character. Yeah. You do what you want to do. All right. What do we... you have? Well, I'm a healer. Stuff? I'm not a goer, so I'm probably gonna hide behind Rangahar. Okay. Do you plan do you on taking any actions? Weapon? None of you have weapons except for a shovel. <laughs> so Sapphire. No, and she took the shovel, so do you, I have nothing. Do you want to cast a spell or reposition or punch somebody? Uh what would you like to do? Well you also have that ball of liquor, you could throw it at the guy. You don't have any damage spell? Honestly, I'm still trying to figure out how to use this. Like, I have. Yeah, it's cool. Um, if you look at your spell list, you'll see what you've got there. You might be able to use something. Even if it's just a healing spell. Are there people in my party who are hurt? You are. You are. Bree is. Can I, like, put a bunch of water on someone ridiculously? Sure. 
How? What's the range on your uh, create water thingy? Thirty feet, apparently. Yeah, you're not. You're you're in range of the guy. If you want to cast your um, your create water spell, go ahead and do so, and I I can I can do somebody for you. Is this a cantrip or a, or a first level? Oh, I'm only the first. Goodness. Um. Is the cloak man within 30 feet? Yes, he is. So if you want to cast a spell. So what if I cast um, create water? Sounds good. Where would you like to do that? Where would you like to create this water? Over top of that guy. Like, okay, this is stupid. That's cool. Yeah, uh, if you want to use that creatively, that's fine. So the guy is currently being douched with about 10 gallons of water on his head. He's going to have disadvantage against uh, dodging anything. Robin, what would you like to do? So was it the bartender or the guy next to me that she got with water? Guy next to you. Sweet. I would like to beat him with a shovel. Do that. Beat him with a shovel. Go ahead and roll for it. Okay, so I have rage right now. Yes. Um, and rage. Yep, that's a hit. Go ahead and roll for damage. That's a one d six for the shovel. I have advantage on strength checks and strength saving throw saving throws. A melee weapon attack using strength. I gain two bonus to the damage roll. Okay, so um, 1d6 plus 2 then. Go ahead. Resistance to bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing damage. So roll your d6 and we'll add 2 to it for the, the rage thing. So 5 plus 2 is 7. So yeah, so you go ahead and you haul off and knock this dude senseless. And he's lying there bleeding out on the floor because you hit him with the edge. And he's bleeding from like a, a head wound. You've cracked his skull pretty badly. He's not in any condition yeah. to fight anymore. Ranagar, what would you like to do? You're saying I can see the bartender from where I'm standing? Yep, you can see the bartender. Okay, bartender's getting an Eldritch Blast as well. Okay. Hey, babe. Yo. Um, I have unarmored defense. So that means my armor class equals 10 plus my dex modifier. Yep, I believe it equals 14, right? modifier. No, well, it's 14, and then it's plus 10, right? No, it starts at 10 because you're, you're unarmored, and then you get your, uh, your dex and your con, which is both two, so that adds up to four. 10 plus, uh, 10 plus four is 14. Oh, okay, damn. Ta-da! Oh my gosh. Is that a hit? Yes, so you Eldritch Blast the heck out of the bartender, and uh, he pretty much... Uh, crumples over on the floor and is twisted up like a pretzel. He did. All right, this fight is over. Everyone that you could possibly hurt has been hurt. The cloaked man on the floor here is trying to crawl out the door, but it's uh, not going to go well for him. What now? Robin, is is she strong enough to like grab him by the ankle and drag him back in? <coughs> yes, she is. That's a good point. If he's getting dragged around by a fairy. By his pinky toe. Okay. So you've got him. What do you want to do? Knock him into a few uh, chairs on the way over to Bubba and, and Safael because that's what she do. All right. He's... I would talk to him nicely to start with. All right. He's bleeding freely. I'm going to take one HP off of him every time you guys do a roll unless he's properly treated. So let me know what you want oh, to do. I, oh, I want to use my first aid kit. Okay. So you, you're I aiming to stop the bleeding? I am a combat medic, yes. I want to patch him up with every uh, normal 
uh, first aid mechanism possible. Okay. Not supernatural, just normal. All right, make a medicine check then. No, it's not bad. You stop the bleeding, though um, you can tell that there's a bit of internal damage and you're not sure how long he's got before he, he dies without some other kind of aid. So what do you guys want to do with him? For enough, are we going to fix him? Since uh, Robin's the one that beamed him and almost killed him, Renegar's going to let her take the lead. Robin is not smart. No, but, but she, she thinks she is. Simple, she can ask simple questions like, "Why Cloaky Man attacked the fairy?" Is he important? Like that. Is he important? Do we need to know what he knows, or is he an asshole? Make a perception check. We need to know because he attacked us. Obviously, they don't want us here for some reason. That be an investigation or a perception? Uh, if you want to. Investigate, that is fine. Go ahead. Not bad. All right, so, Tanith, you investigate the immediate area. The guy down the floor has a tattoo of shears on his wrist. You're starting to notice a theme here. The crossbow bolts that you guys uh, found, the ones that are stuck in your friends and the ones that are stuck in the walls, uh, they are like a hollow sort of needlepoint crossbow bolts. They don't have a regular head on them. And those of you that have been hit with crossbow bolts are starting to feel a little sluggish. You might not have gotten a good dose of poison, but you're pretty sure the, po the tips were poisoned. Renegar turns and looks at Saifael and, and tells her, uh, you need to remove that bolt and start healing yourself, or you may not like the consequences of whatever was in that arrow. Fairies don't like poison. Yeah, we uh, we need to find out what is. Uh, I need to do some medicine checks or something to like. Perfect. That's hoping, Perfect. That's what I was hoping you would say. Do a medicine check on the poison, or on your wound, either one. Renegar is going to go over there and pull the bolt out since she's doing a medicine check. Oh, good roll. That's a good roll. Okay. So the poison in there, judging by its um, its smell and its texture and such, is probably a form of droll leaf, which is a torpor poison. It would put the the victim into a death-like state uh, for an indeterminate amount of time, depending on how much they've been dosed and depending on the metabolism. Do we have an antidote? Uh, you didn't get the you didn't get enough of a dose to really put you out this time, but you feel like if they would to to shoot you until you stopped moving and then give you another dose, you would definitely go into a death like state, um, just like it's supposed to be. Do we think that the drunk? Goodness, that's poison? very uh, permanent. Well, this poison well, does not actually kill you. It puts you in a death like state, and you wake up later. You're you're still alive. Like someone who could be buried alive. Renegar shakes down the man and disarms him of any valuable uh, weapons or anything that he could use to then therefore hurt us. All right, you to... you All get right. a crossbow with bolts, uh, uh, like a, a hand crossbow. You get a uh, a little uh, a little dagger that was on his belt. The other guys are the other guy is armed similarly. The bartender had a club behind the bar and his crossbow as well. I'll do that. Yeah, toss the club to Robin, hand Raphael <coughs> the deck, and one of their crossbows, and then uh, I'll take the other crossbow. Or was there three? Yeah, there was three. They all had crossbows. Then we'll all three take crossbows and uh, I'll hand Raphael the dagger and Robin the club and I'll do without a melee weapon for now. Better than nothing. Can I use? Can I use the crossbow? You can. You're proficient with martial weapons. You don't get You're to take like thing, but you can use a crossbow. That's awesome. She's very strong. I know, right? 
All right, so what are you going to want to do with this guy or the immediate area or whatever? Um, I want to question him before he dies. Okay. So uh, I'm not going to do any lines for this guy, but you want to intimidate him or, or what? You can't intimidate him. I'm going to use my telepathy to unnerve him and attempt to intimidate him myself. Both of you make an intimidation okay. roll. <laughs> right, he spits at you. And you. And you're you're very struck by this because if the spit were to strike you, it might knock you out of the air. <laughs> he says uh he says uh, uh something along the lines of you're even the even if you're not a willing sacrifice, you're being sacrificed all the same. Uh but Sapphire upon coming over to him and looking at him coldly, he he can't look away from Sapphire and, and he's like, listen, I just uh, th this was all a big misunderstanding. You weren't supposed to wake up. You weren't supposed to wake up. Speak into his mind some more and tell him that is not all you know. Give Why us some not? more or we will then therefore let you, you bleed out. Doesn't matter if I die. Just we want the slavery to end. We want the we want the binding to end. Just let me die. I don't care. Anybody got anything else? Why not? The binding the binding as in the um the whatchamacallit? The the blight wood. The clock is ticking, sacrifice. No matter what you do, you're still doing our will. Kill me, let me go. It doesn't matter. You're still going to die. Well, I guess we'll see you first in hell. Or whatever you're going to. <clears throat> yep. I yeah, that, that was my death sound. Did you like it? It was great. Very Thank descriptive. You. Good, good. Yes. All right, so you myrtleized a few people. I was going to have the bartender run oh, at the last part, but up. you just gibbed him. So, what do you want to do now? Check the other two guys for, for stuff? or did Well, we, we have to find our stuff. That's right. Is this an inn, or is it just, uh, I mean, is it a place to stay? Or My whole just, uh... real 20 just, like, got destroyed. That sucks. Oh, no, it came back. Well, no, I said it came back, and then I came. It destroyed. I just changed maps. It might be doing something. Yeah, it's so wait. keeping up, apparently. I love it. This is so much fun. So, is, are there are there rooms there? Yes, there are rooms you can stay in now that the uh, the innkeeper's dead. But you're staying with a can bunch we, of corpses. Yeah, can we check the, rest the of the rooms? rooms? Yeah. <clears throat> uh, okay, you don't have to make any rolls. You can take as much time as you want. In one of them, there is a halfling passed out in his in his bunk. He didn't hear anything downstairs apparently. The other two are empty. Uh, the halfling's room is just has like basic stuff for a guy that travels a lot and little little tiny clothes like a toddler. And uh in the other two rooms there's nothing. That but out you're you're searching the whole inn, right? All right, out yeah. back you guys find or oh, hang on, let me look at my notes here. Okay, out back you find uh go ahead and roll a perception check back there. There are things to find. Perception? Yes. Unless you unless you think investigation is better for you. It was fine for... Wait, are we still playing? Yeah. Uh, unless you need to go to bed or something. No, I love playing. I just was thinking you were telling the short story. No, 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 no. It's, well, it is a short story, but we haven't gotten quite to the end yet. 
All right, out back, you guys find... I want to play. All right, you guys find boot prints of two people, deeper than they probably should be judging by their size. They may have been carrying bodies, maybe yours. And there's also, uh, you guys that rolled really good perception rolls and investigation rolls, there's an empty vial under the wooden stairs coming down from the inn's back door. Uh, you just, you discover it's the same like torpor poison that was on the crossbow bolts that have hit you. So the boot prints that are heavy enough to where like they're probably carrying bodies like your bodies, they head off in a direction toward the uh, wood uh, like the wood depository shed. It's like over on the side of the inn over this way. And there's like a there's like a building over there. There's like a whole thing of of like stacked firewood from the woods somewhere around here, and the the b- footprints lead all the way up to this shack. Do a perception well, check let's... on this. What's that? I do a perception check on the shack. See if there's anything that stands out about it or around it. Yeah. Man, they are bad tonight. Ooh. That's rough. Yeah, you don't see anything out of the ordinary. Uh, the The shack is just a, a small wooden building. The door is closed. There's no light from coming from inside or anything like that. Robin generally doesn't think things through anyway, so yay, let's... Um, Marlo, did you want to come with them to this uh, mysterious shack where the footprints go? Very much so. I'm trying to figure out how to get there. Like the your roll twenty still not working? Are you seeing me now? Uh yes, you are in roll twenty. At least it looks like it. Like someone send me something. Uh, let me send a chat message. There, see that? Yes. All right. All right, you're connected. Okay, so this shack, the fairy decides she wants to just barge in. All right, so Bree, I guess you're like kicking open the door. I guess so. All right, so you kick open the door. The shed is filled with a bunch of tools and stuff, and a dude that was supposedly sleeping in a chair, <clears throat> he bolts upright and uh, and looks at all of you as the, the, the shed door opens. He's like, oh, shit. And he grabs his chest, like reaches into his shirt and clutches like an, an amulet. And uh, his bones start, his arms and his legs start to elongate. His, his uh, torso gets thicker. And he starts to grow all this fur all over his body. And he hunches over and you hear like the roar of like a bear. And now you're fighting a bear in a shed. Druid? I don't know, Jim. So, So, everybody roll for initiative on the bear. Wee! Wee initiative! One sec, gotta re-roll that. I wasn't clicking my character. Cheetah. Cheetah. I mean, if you can see my first one, you can put it on there. It's fine. Hey, so, Tarfael, if you have any healing that you can throw my way, I'll be your best friend. Remember, you have to click your uh, your token before you roll initiative, or else it won't count it. Okay. So you've got to have yourself selected. Oh, I see you rolling initiative, but I don't think you've selected your token in roll twenty whenever you're doing it.
Marlo, you there? Yeah, I'm listening. Sorry, I'm trying to figure it out. Sorry. Okay, so you go to roll 20, select your token, which is like the little blue silhouette with Sapphire under it, right? Then you go back to your character sheet and roll initiative from there What with that thing selected, and then you'll be in the turn order. Okay. Try it, meow. Hmm, not working. So do you Is have you want? Do you have your token selected whenever you're doing this? I have Marlo selected, and then you got the, like, you got the initiative the above and about below your character. Yeah, like whenever you click on your little token, it should have like the three. Uh, circles up above it, the red, green, and blue, you know? Do you see that? Under my character, it doesn't do that. So, like, so what we're looking at right now is the map. Like, we're on the map, and we have your characters down in the town. There's Ranagar, and then there's uh, Robin. Oh, sorry. Okay, I was looking at my actual character. That's fine. That's what we're here for. Go click on that that token on the map so that you have the red, red green, green, and blue. blue. Now roll initiative, and it should get you on the turn order. That's why we have these session zeros. So you can get those things worked out for yourself. Everybody forgets to select their token whenever they're rolling initiative. Like, to a man, during D&D night, we always have to tell people, like, hey, select your token. So do you want red, green, or blue? You don't need to do any you of those. Need... You just to, you just need to have it selected. Then go to your character sheet and roll for initiative. So like, you've got the the little icon, the, the Saphiel icon on the map selected. So it's got those little things showing up. There you go. You got oh, it. it. You rolled Did it. Work? It worked. Okay. Robin. Sorry. That's okay. That's why we have this this kind of session. Robin, you're facing off against a bear in a shack. What do you want to do? Ask myself, was this a good idea? Well, maybe not so much, but um now I have um a club. <laughs> yeah, it's roaring at you. I just scared the chickens. Oh, <laughs> you guys and your chicken specs on this club uh, that is a 1d8 weapon am I still raging uh, no otherwise I think you'd be like foaming at the mouth or something you guys had to walk here A maximum number of times for my level is two. All right. Well, I'm going to rage again. Rage against that bear machine. Go ahead. Since I don't have the club set up, I'll just do it this. Yeah, it's fine. You're about to get your stuff back. Um, all right. So you, you hit the, the bear on the head with your club. Roll for damage. That's a 1d8, and that's plus 2 because you're raging. That's a 9. All right. So you, you bonk that bear. It it sneezes, and then it, it comes at you with its claws. Renegar, what do you want to do? Oh, I think you know. I, I think I know, too. Preparing myself to get gibbed. You know what? I've got another one I haven't tried yet. All right. All right. This uh, chill touch. Ooh, seems so chill. 22. Ooh, my, twa -la -la. my ding dong. My goodness. <laughs> hey, does he get to use a, a card? A what? No, a that, what? Was critical. that was just I have a plus five. Okay. So your chill touch hits it for seven damage. The bear. Uh, for its part, or the man that is a bear right now, 
is limping and having a hard time getting to all you. Uh, Madame Marlou, go ahead. Before my turn ends, could I talk to it for a second? Wait, the bear, like, it took that damage and wants to talk to us? Maybe it's a... not a bear. It's not trying to talk. I mean, Ranagar, you want to use your psychic stuff on it? Go ahead. Want to go ahead. Yeah, stand down or you will die. If you stop attacking us, we will stop attacking you. Uh, the, All telepathically. Uh, the bear's thoughts are very simple, but it's like... Uh, it it thinks of you as prey, more like die, sacrifice, die, and it tries to charge at you still. Righty. All right, now it's your turn, Marlo. What do you want to do? There, um, I. I... You have a crossbow and a weapon now. If you decide to use it, you've got your dagger and you've got a crossbow. If you want to use it on anything. You also have your spells. Uh, uh, well, my cross, my spells are, I don't think they're relevant, but uh, crossbow. Okay. Click it. Is there something I literally have to do? Uh, on your character sheet in D and D Beyond, if you've got a crossbow in there, you can you can click on it to attack, like under the attacks tab. I'm not sure if you have one in there. Is um, we would have to get it with our starter from it because I just added one to my inventory. But most people do. That's why I say that. Let me look at her sheet. It would be under her um, equipment section. Yeah, you've got a hand crossbow in there, I think. It's under your uh, actions and then attacks. Like there's there's the actions tab and then the, like there's all and then attack. You should have a hand crossbow there. If you hover your mouse over the little bow icon, it'll have that little dice roll animation. Like this. You stole, you stole her critical. Yeah, I guess I, I stole her roll for 20. You see it? I'm still trying to find it. Okay, so it's at the, the bottom right part of your your character sheet. There's, there's a bunch of tabs. There's an actions tab, a spells tab, equipment tab, features and traits and extras. You see all that? Suppose you can share screens and make it easier. You got it. All right. I found it. You did it. I, I was garbage. You found the damage. You need to find it. Yeah. Thing. You rolled the damage, but you didn't roll the actual attack. Like um, uh, wherever you clicked, you clicked on the damage. Instead, click on the hand crossbow, like over on the left. There you go. That's it. Let's say hit slash D two. And now you click on it for damage and roll twenty, and it'll tell you what kind of damage you can do. Click on the screen on the right hand side. Like, in, like this is in roll twenty. Like it just put a bunch of stuff there for roll twenty, and if you click, it, it it'll say like crossbow hand sixteen roll damages, and you click that pink box right there. You have it. Do you have her chat window up, John? chat window yeah the one on the right so is it, good, is it good john sorry yeah that that roll is good you can hit the bear now we're just trying to determine how much damage you do so go ahead and click on the damage part of your crossbow but where you click the first time all right three yeah okay <laughs> All right. No, it's good. Uh, that's good for the that crossbow. Anyway, you guys reacted so quickly, the bear did not get a chance to swipe at any of you before it went down. The final crossbow sticks out of its eye, and it goes down in a heap. 
and slowly started starts like the the hair starts falling off and it starts to shrink down into a man again. Damn, Renegar could use a bear skin rug. <laughs> you can always have a person skin rug. Anyway, your gear is sitting up against the far wall of the shack. You recognize it immediately. Your armor's there, your weapon's there. Nothing seems to be missing, although someone has searched the contents. I'd like to uh, roll the bear for see what he had. He's a man now, but okay, go ahead. All right. Uh, he has an amulet of... Um, of animal form. What, what is that spell called? I, hold on. Wild shape. Ambulant of wild shape. Hold on. I'll, I'll, I will put it in the chat. It's funny. I have it on in my notes on my phone, but not in here like a doofus. I'm going to look it up in roll or roll 20. Or D and D beyond. You said amulet of what? Amulet of wild shape. This is a unique one. Just, just hang on. That we got from killing that bear. It, yeah, from killing this guy that used the amulet to turn into a bear. Yeah. Can I roll a thing to learn that? You can use the you amulet can... if whoever wants it. Oh, uh, what's the amulet? Do? I'm on that. It'd be interesting if the, the fairy could turn into a bear. Would it be a fairy sized bear? Oh, that would oh, be oh, great. Right. Right. <laughs> I feel like a care bear. I feel like a cute, like. Oh, I want it. All right. I am now putting the handout up there. Okay. So this is a good opportunity to show you the handouts section of this. I should have just popped up for you guys the amulet of wild shape. Is that correct? There it is. I, did, I opened it up and so it's it's on my screen now. Okay. So there remember there are a few tabs. There's like the chat tab up at the top of roll twenty. There's the and there's the uh journal. Under journal you're gonna see an entry for the amulet of wild shape now. Man, that would be freaking awesome for me. I see it. Yeah, that's cool. So now one of you, if you use the amulet, can turn into a bear once a day for a minute. And uh you just get plus one on all your rolls. You guys could uh, do a D twenty dice roll and see if you get the higher score to get the manual because I'll, I'll back off. I don't. I don't need it. Was there anything else on the body? Back out of that I don't know how to use it. I still have a traditional first aid kit as my main. The the amulet's not hard can... to use. You just hold on to it with your hand and you turn into a bear. Yeah. Yeah. No. Someone who is way more awesome should. I'm just a healer. But, but potentially yeah, potentially a healer that can turn into a bear. Which would make you at least a little bit more effective in combat, which will help all of us. Okay. Okay, so you're just going to just assume that you have that for now. We'll add it to your inventory later and we'll move on, okay? Oh, dear. Okay. All right. Okay, so amulet that shifts the user to a bear for one minute. All attacks are considered in a claw attacks with plus one modifier. Uh, but, like, what do I have to do to invoke that? Uh, just, so uh, just say you're doing it, yeah. All right, I'm down with that. But so it, like, it only... you guys know I'm the use useless person in this party, right? But you could be a useless bear that can claw people. Also, you're only useless as long as you're not making yourself useful. You douched a guy with water a while ago, and you can heal people, and you've also got a daggered for stabbing now. You've got all your equipment back. You also killed the bear. It's true. You killed the bear. Uh, okay. Onward. Upward. All right. Uh, Renegar starts putting on his armor as soon as he receives it. Oh yeah, you're. I love this, by the way. In case you don't know, like 
I have wanted to play D and D for like a decade. Well, good. Well, I'm glad you're having fun. Oh, um, Ranagar, your investigation check. It shows that this guy has a tattoo in his wrist as well. A pair of shears. Is there any chance this is red hand? The guy doesn't have red hands, but he's quite dead, so you can't ask him. The uh, The blood is dripping down onto the floor. It's like a solid sort of stone floor, but it all seems to be going underneath the uh, the wood pile. And whenever you look down at uh, on the floor, like you get down and investigate, you see that there is actually a grate and a trap door underneath a uh like the the wood pile that's on like a little sled and if you if you slide it back there's a uh a trap door that goes out down into the dark well, i don't mean to be a bummer but i need to kind of call it for the evening yeah that's cool we'll see you later then we'll see you, later. you can play renegar if you like and that's fine with me okay all right man have a good night yes i did i enjoyed it thank you all right, so do you guys want to go down into the dark hole, or do you want to uh, do something else? This is probably a good time. To call we it. should probably wait and call it. Yeah. All right. Sounds good. That's cool. We will turn it into a session zero point five next time. Then. Fair enough. I love playing with you guys. I appreciate it very much. I know I'm. You got a better okay. you got a better understanding of what some of the things require, like the mechanics and such. Yeah, I'll get there. Yeah, it's gonna take a while, but yeah, I get it. Yeah, it'll it'll click eventually. For now, I'll stop the recording.